Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Seek and Destroy show. And today we're going to check out the new trailer for Batman The Long Halloween Part 1, which is uh, part one of a two-part movie. Obviously, the graphic novel is 13 issues long, written by Jeff Loeb with art by the amazing Tim Sale. I have his uh, Heroes poster behind me um, from the show Heroes, and uh, I love Tim Sale's work. Now, I do know the art style in this movie is not going to be Tim Sale influenced. Uh, they're kind of using the new house style, which kind of looks like the show Archer that they used uh, used in Batman Man of Tomorrow, or Superman Man of Tomorrow, sorry, uh, and obviously the new JSA movie that's coming out, Justice Society World War II. So those two movies have a similar art style, which is kind of looks like the show Archer, and that's the new style they're using going forward, showing the connective universes. So what's cool about that is that if Jensen Ackles is playing Batman here, uh, which he is in this movie in both parts, um, who I'm a big fan of, I'm a big Supernatural fan, I got the tattoos to prove it. Um, and so uh, so for you know me, I'm very excited to see him continue on and do other things. Obviously, he's going to be in The Boys soon too. But uh, Jensen, I hope this means that he's the new voice of Batman. So if they start building these solo movies and then build their way to a Justice League animated movie, I hope Jensen is along the ride for the whole time. That would be awesome. And we also have the final performance of the late Naya Rivera, who was from Glee and who tragically passed away last year with a lot of mystery going around of what happened. But it was a really heartbreaking storyline. And it turns out, though, that she actually recorded all of her lines for both movies before she passed. And so this is kind of her last performance here that we're going to get. At, and she's playing Selena Kyle Catwoman. So, uh, so, and there's another great, you know, obviously a lot of other great cast members, Josh Duhamel and everyone who's going to be a part of this. So we're going to go ahead and watch the trailer first. And then I'm going to read the press release to you guys. And then probably in the next, like, you know, a uh, couple days or a week or something like that, I'm going to start reviewing on here on the Seek and Destroy show each uh, issue of the comic book. So we'll do all 13 of them every now and again. Like I'll just grab one every now and again and do a review of it. So we'll discuss uh, issue one of Batman Long Halloween coming up very soon. And we'll hopefully get through, you know, at least half of them by the time the uh, first part, I mean, this first movie comes out part one. And then we'll, between part one and two, we'll go through the other half. So, uh, so yeah, so buckle in everyone. Uh, I have a link down below if you want to watch this trailer without me talking over it. And without further ado, we are going to get into Batman The Long Halloween part one. Here we go. PG-13. I heard the second one's going to be rated R, which is crazy. I can't really be a lawyer and a criminal, can I? Oh, Harvey Dent. I want to win. But do I want to win like this? Oh. Two lines here. So it's a coin flip. Oh, I like that. That's not in the comic. That's a great addition. Uh, that scene is very pivotal to, uh, Johnny was to uh, the Johnny bonding of, to of Batman and out. Harvey Dent. Ooh. Maniac in this Joker. I think Troy Baker comes back as Joker. Trick or treat. Why are you running? You could use a little fun. I like that sound effect in the back of. Oh, that's cool. I thought you didn't hurt people. You thought wrong. Hero or villain? A DC Universe movie. You still haven't figured. I'm liking the animation. I like the new animation style. Who Calendar Man. Oh, that's cool. That's a shot from the comic. Lots of crazy guys. Uh, with the dead body. Ah, oh, Solomon Grundy. That's from it's issue two, right there. I Things think. Are gonna be different. We can start a family. Oh, Gilda looks great. Oh, they did a good job here. Oh. Then we must endeavor to lift it up again. Oh man, I love that. It's a good Alfred line. Who is Holiday, and who's next? That's cool. I know a lot of people are kind of on the fence of how they translated Hush, which was another Jeff Loeb written uh, comic book, and that was 12 issues, and they crammed it into one animated movie. Um, I definitely share some of those criticisms, but ultimately I liked what they did in that by changing certain things, especially the revelation of who Hush was. Because it's not completely different from the comics, you know, Riddler was involved, but uh, but it is it, they do a different spin on it. But I, I kind of like that. I, I, I thought that was a good use of misdirection of being like, hey, you know, the comic, right? So you kind of know what to expect. Ah, ah, we gotcha. And they did something that I still felt makes sense story wise without completely deviating and just doing something just to subvert expectations. So I personally didn't mind what they did in Hush. 
but uh, but so I'm I'm excited to see this. Like I think breaking this into two movies though is smarter. If you try to cram all of Long Halloween into one, you know, 70 minute animated movie, I don't think that would have worked. You would have had to cover too much ground and cut out too much stuff. And some of that stuff is in there, not so much as filler, like the Grundy stuff. You could probably cut that maybe, but why would you want to? It's so good. It's it's such good material. So um so I'm excited for this. I'm so glad they're doing it. And when I heard uh, Naya her voice as Catwoman there, she sounded great. So uh so yeah, I can't wait to see the you know this final product and everything and i'm excited to go back and uh and reread the comic i already started rereading um on issue three now so that's why issues one and two are so f like uh still in my head really well uh because there's that scene at the beginning where they're like you know uh batman and, and harvey dent are gonna light the money on fire there's this whole great story in the book uh from issue one i'll just talk about issue one uh and then we'll i like i said i'll do a review of it later but there's this uh part in issue one this recurring thing where carmine falcone who's the, you know the mob boss that everyone's trying to take down he's uh you know he's take he's buying up banks he's embezzling money and laundering money and he's he's almost to the point where he can blackmail the board members of wayne enterprises to get control of Wayne Enterprises. And so Batman has to do all these like uh, creative things and, and you know Batman related things to kind of make that not happen. And then they end up taking away his ability to launder all this money. So Carmine Falcone's money is sitting in this warehouse, just you know, stacked up and they're just waiting to transfer it somewhere somehow. And so Batman and Harvey Dent go there and burn the money uh, and basically screwing over uh, the Roman, AKA Carmine Falcone. So, I'm it's good it's it's a really good book and it's it's totally all about the crime lords of, of Gotham and how they start to phase out as the you know as the freaks rise so it's like it's kind of the two ships passing in the sea it's like the Car Carmine Falcones and the Maronis and everyone of uh, Gotham who are the crime bosses who ran the city for years now they're starting to get phased out as Joker and, and Grundy and Poison Ivy and all these other characters are on the rise. And we also get to see the birth of Two-Face in this. Uh, so yes, it's really, really cool. We'll get more into the comic uh, later. Let me read this uh, press release real quick. Uh, it says, produced by Warner's Animation, DC and Warner Brother Home Entertainment, inspired by the iconic mid-1990s DC story from Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, Batman The Long Halloween Part 1 begins as a brutal murder on Halloween prompts Gotham's young vigilante, the Batman, to form a pact with the city's only two uncorrupt lawmen, police captain James Gordon and district attorney Harvey Dent, in order to take down the Roman, head of the notorious and powerful Falcone crime family. Uh, but when more deaths occur on Thanksgiving and Christmas, it becomes clear that instead of ordinary gang violence, they're also dealing with a serial killer, the identity of whom, with each conflicting, uh, each conflicting clue, grows harder to discern. Few cases have ever tested the wits of the world's greatest detective, like the mystery behind the holiday killer. And that's what's really cool. This is kind of the first major serial killer in the Batman canon, uh, you know, after they kind of rewritten the canon a bunch of times. But this is kind of, if you are reading Batman stories in order, you could read uh, Batman, uh, I guess, the year one. And then read uh, Batman, the Man Who Laughs, or whatever the Joker story. Not the not the Batman Who Laughs, but there was one I think called Man Who Laughs by Ed Brubaker, and that kind of tells you a retelling of the first interaction between Batman and Joker. And you could read that, and then maybe you can read the first appearances of like Poison Ivy and Grundy and a couple other characters. Then you read uh, Long Halloween. So that's kind of like your reading order if you want to make a uh, a more updated without going back to the Golden and Silver Age uh, too much make a more updated uh, origin for Gotham City. It's If you read it like that, it, it works. It's actually pretty good. Um, so lauded for his performance as Red Hood Jason Todd in 2010's Under the Red Hood, Jensen Ackles from Supernatural and Smallville returns to the DC Universe movie uh, as the title character of Batman Bruce Wayne. I'm so pumped for this. There's literally a scene in Supernatural where he, uh, he gets like a lucky rabbit's foot and he throws a pen and it bounces around the room and knocks out all the guys. And then he just goes, I'm Batman. <laughs> it's really, really good. And, and I think ever since then and probably before that, but even definitely since then, he's been wanting to play Batman. So I, I love that he played Jason Todd because that's my boy also. But uh, I'm very excited to hear his Batman voice. I mean, I heard a little bit of there in the trailer, but I can't wait to, to watch the whole movie. Uh, so then we also have, like I said, the late Naya Rivera from Glee, who passed away in 2020, gives one of her final, oh, one of her final performances 
as Catwoman slash Selena Kyle, because of course there's a second part to this movie that she also does the voice of Catwoman for. Um, then the all-star cast includes Josh Duhamel from Transformers in Las Vegas. I love Josh Duhamel and he's playing Harvey Dent. Uh, Billy Burke from Twilight and Revolution as James Gordon. Titus Welliver, I'm a huge Titus fan from Bosch and Deadwood as Carmen Fi uh, Carmine Falcone. Uh, David Dashmalchen from the new Suicide Squad movie, he plays Polka Dot Man and he was in the Ant-Man movies and he was in The Dark Knight actually. Um, he's, uh, he's playing Calendar Man. Uh, Troy Baker is coming back from the Arkham Knight video games in The Last of Us to play Joker. I think he first played Joker in Arkham Origins, which uh, he did a great job in. Um, and, uh, Amy Landecker from Your Honor and Transparent as Barbara Gordon. Julie Nathanson uh, from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, which is a great movie, uh, as Gil the Dent. Jack Quad uh, from The Boys and The Hunger Games as Alberto Falcone. Um, and then we have Fred uh, Tadescure. I always mispronounce his last name. I'm sorry, Fred. Uh, amazing voice actor. Amazing, amazing voice actor. Uh, is playing Solomon Grundy. Uh, and Alistair Duncan uh, is going to be playing uh, Alfred. And he played uh, Alfred in The Batman. So I'm so glad he's coming back because he also played uh, Alfred in Batman Unlimited as well. Uh, so, and then we got other voices by Francis Collier, Greg Chun, uh, Gary Leroy Gray, and Jim Peary. Uh, Chris Palmer, who wrote uh, or directed Superman Man of Tomorrow, directs this movie, the part one anyway, and the screenplay is by Tim Sheridan, who wrote Reign of the Superman and also Superman Man of Tomorrow. So I'm glad that they have like a, a, a more concise team. Like, of course I want other voices and other people working on these, but maybe as directors. Um, I like that Tim Sheridan and, and like two, two other writers are all kind of seemingly be, being the ones that are used in all these animated films with this new animation style. So I'm, at least so far, I mean, we're only a couple movies in. So I'm curious to see what Tim brings to the table because I liked Reign of Superman a lot. Um, and I liked Man of Tomorrow uh, uh, tremendously. And then of course we have our friends, Jim Krieg, who's uh, producing it. And, uh, and Kimberly Moreau, um, also producing it. Butch Lukic, uh, who worked on a lot of stuff, been part of the DC Animated Universe for years, uh, also produced uh, Justice Society and uh, Man of Tomorrow as well, is the supervising producer and executive producer Michael Uslan and Sam Register as executive producer. Um, I think it's going to come out in the summertime, though. So, uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very pumped for this. This is, I liked Hush a lot. I think that's a really great book. To me, Hush is a great entry level book like if someone's like hey I've, I'm, i want to get into comics and i kind of like batman what would you suggest hush is definitely one of those but long halloween is another one like i would probably give someone year one and then long halloween and be like read these two in that order year one and long halloween and then tell me what you you know what you feel and afterwards if you like it and if you want to go more this route or if you want to try another character but i think these that you know combination of those two would hook just about anybody uh but long halloween great story mystery big time mystery and i think a lot of this story is actually going to influence uh, it influence some of the nolan stuff but it's also going to influence some of the matt reeves stuff coming up uh which is pretty cool so i'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how matt reeves is going to you know, uh, pull inspiration from this and then, uh, you know, make a Riddler story along with it. I'm pumped, but this I'm really, really pumped for. So let me know your thoughts down below. And like I said, in the next like week or two, I'll probably uh, discuss the first issue of Long Halloween. And then every now and again, you know, I'll probably just, we'll do them one at a time. And sometime between now and the release of this movie, we'll try to get through the first maybe six or seven issues. And then we'll, after the first movie, we'll then dive into the last like six or seven issues, you know, depending on how I break it up. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in Gotham. Peace.